Today we're going to simplify the backside jams, focus on the two most prevalent ones, not talk about the dislocation of the bear trap, which isn't the most prevalent jam that I have seen. I have never actually had that one. I, I know that now. Okay, so people were getting a little confused and I need to state this is a fixed channel. Uh, I've had too many people, I don't care if you're 72 or 12 years old, if you tell me, oh, just take it apart and let's fix this. You, you can't do that here because you have a mainspring and an anti-trap, all right? And there's no better way to show this than with the loose parts. Is Okay, if you have a healthy gun and you just want a disassembly video, I have a great channel I'll send you to. This is a fixed channel. And fixing the gun without taking it apart is actually more thrifty and correct. Okay, so... There are two main ways that we get backside jams. One is a faux jam that people make into a real jam. The other one, we have a real jam that people make worse. So let me simplify that a little bit more. We have user error. They tried taking out the screw right here. That causes a real jam that most people don't clear. All right. The other one is a jam, is a real jam. They also try taking out that screw and they make it worse. So let's go over this. What do both those jams have in common? When you don't do it right, your power plant grabs one of these teeth on your anti-trap and pulls this into your gun. A lot of damage, most people don't fix that. So let's avoid that. Okay, so let's start with the easiest one. Okay, I appreciate a young lad shooting a video for me about um, what was wrong with his gun because he wasn't cocking it right. And I was happy he shot that video. Okay, so that's one click. Two, three, four, five. Okay, now let's go ahead and use a tape measure. And I already know where the, that is. From the top of that lever to that cutout. There's a cutout right there. Okay, you'll see it. Okay. And so on five clicks, that is seven eighths of an inch away from here to there. That's too far. Your gun is not cocked. But so what does that look like? Yeah, slack levers, slack trigger. And then they blunder and take that screw out and they lose their gun. So your gun is not jammed. Okay. So let's go give it one more click. Okay. That would be equal to one, two, three, four, five, six on the very back of that tooth. We'll call the tooth. Okay. And what is the measurement on that? It's still not all the way up. So the measurement for that is about five eighths of an inch. Okay. Five eighths of an inch. And then when it's all the way up, it's three eighths of an inch. And that's the sweet spot. And it really jumps forward to three eighths of an inch. Okay. Oh, gun fixed. All right. People may be surprised, but this is a big way that people lose their weapon. Their, their red rider is they don't cock it right. Think it's jammed. They try taking out that screw and that's it. Okay. Now let's talk about the, the real jam and I will go through it in real time and we'll actually go through step by step. So, I think it's fair that people want more detail there. Okay. So you cock your gun. It's definitely on the sweet spot. Measure it if you have to. I can tell just by looking that's where it's supposed to be. But then when you cock it, this is still slack. So let me make, make it clear. What does that mean? It means it's not doing this. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not doing this. You don't hear that clicking. Okay. Your trigger's not working. So it's slack lever, slack trigger. Nothing's working. Dead silent. Okay, now this one is working, but you would cock your gun, goes three eighths of an inch, slack, and this is slack too when you close it up. Okay, then that's a real one. And your plunger's up here dislocated in the frame somewhere. Okay, so now what we want to do in that situation is go ahead and remove both these nuts. Now I've talked to a few people because we're trying to get uh, relax tension in the frame, get some lateral flexion here. Don't need to worry about the top screw. And some people said they had to pull out both of those, both of these. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we start by taking out the nuts. Okay. And then the other one. Now, no, this doesn't cause anything to go wrong with your gun because the screws are still anchored. And we're just trying to get them to unanchor from the right frame. See that piece of sheet metal right there? We're just trying to get them to unanchor and it'll give some flexion. Sometimes from the factory, this comes a little tight. So now we switch to our Phillips head. Okay. And I'm going to step over there 
and I want to make it clear. Now, I've talked about taping this. You can and you should, but you don't have to, but you need to keep that trigger pulled the whole time. Remember, where your trigger blade goes, the anti-trap anti follows. The anti-trap will follow it down, follows it down, okay? So again, so let me, it follow, as you pull your trigger, it follows it down, down, as you, okay? So, remember that saying, where the trigger goes, anti-bear trap follows, okay? So, now you pull your trigger, hold it all the way back, but when I say that, you have to hold all the way back and keep it back. And then, once it disengages, you'll hear that wonderful sound, that thong sound, as this thing shoots forward as this shoots forward and releases in your gun, okay? But you do not move your, <laughs> I may make clear, you do not move your finger or your gun and you just keep on screwing that till you hear that, okay? So I wanna make that very clear, okay? And we're gonna say, I just have been staying just like this and you hear that sound, that's great. It's totally disengaged from the right side of the frame. That's good, okay? You can see, well, it's not there anymore. And if it doesn't do that, then you put your gun back down, keep squeezing that trigger and repeat the process in the back and you check it by putting your hand on the other side keep that trigger pulled where the trigger goes the anti-bear trap follows okay so that also is now disengaged okay your gun shoots great great okay reset it put your screws back in you release your trigger finger and it's that simple now for that one now remember the situation where your gun it's mostly slack here and your trigger is working is not the same one and this this video doesn't cover that okay and then put your there we go and put that back on use your nut driver to tighten those and your gun is fixed so like i said for a lot of you just cocking your gun will work and then when it's a genuine jam i just showed you how to do that no you don't need to disassemble the gun why would you what no this is that's don't do that so again, if your gun is healthy, ask and I'll give you a link to the channel, but we uh, don't want to disassemble the gun at all in this situation, this scenario. And once it's fixed, happy shooting.